Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Spherical Camera Node. So we're going to jump into Fusion. And I've just got a little setup and you can't see nothing because we're going to be going over the Spherical Camera. And what the Spherical Camera allows you to do is it allows the renderer to output an image covering all viewing angles. So if you kind of think of like a VR headset or something like showing all viewing angles so you can like look around that's what the spherical camera does now in order to use the spherical camera you, you need to have either lat long or horizontal vertical cross or horizontal vertical strip images and unfortunately the only uh images i have that have a lat long data are uh, hdris so i'm going to bring in an hdri but just know this is not how we set up an HDRI for like an environment or lighting or anything with Infusion. I'm just bringing this in because this just so happens to be the only media I have that has lat long data natively. So any HDRI in EXR format will have lat long data within it. So you can uh, use this in a uh, spherical camera. Now, to be able to use this, we need a sphere because the camera needs to look inside a sphere. So we're going to bring in a shape node and we're going to make this a sphere. And we'll go ahead and input it into our little merge. And let's zoom out. And let's make our shape quite a bit bigger. We're going to go ahead and just make it 10. And I'm going to input our media into our shape. So if we look at our render node, we can see something going on. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our shape and go to lighting and uncheck affected by lights because I don't want our uh, ambient light affecting it. I just want to see the image. So if we look in our regular camera here at our rendered image, I can, uh, I can move this around on the Z and no, I can't. Let me go ahead and uh, put our camera in the middle. There we go. I can pan around and we can see our image inside that sphere, but it just looks like footage and it doesn't look that great and we can still look up and down and but if we want to see this better we want to use a spherical camera so we're going to disconnect this camera and i'm going to search spherical camera we're going to go ahead and bring that into our merge and right off the bat we're not seeing anything and uh, i will get there but first I'm going to cover some of the settings on the uh, spherical camera. So if we look, we can see our camera sitting here in the middle and it's got all these lines because uh, that's what it's looking at. It's looking at kind of everything. So let's get inside our sphere. There we go. And first let's go over control visibility. So we can check and uncheck show view controls. We can see or not see our frustrum we can view our vector or view vector that's what we're actually looking at is our view vector if i uncheck this we can see our near and far clip you can see that right here and our far clip is pan around here so we can see what's going on our far clip is way out here you can see that and we can see our focal plane and on all these we can change the subdivisions on our clips if we need to in the subdivisions on our focal planes and up top this will adjust the location of your focal plane and that is actually moving back and forth you just can't see it from there so you can see it moving further away and closer to the camera and this is what we need when we go to render and we 
enable accumulation facts to be able to see that depth of field. And our conversion distance right here is for when we have stereo cameras set up. So speaking of stereo cameras, if you remember in their uh, camera breakdown, we can uh, copy this and we can uh, have a second camera input. So now this camera is controlling both cameras and we can change our modes, whether it's mono, toe in, off access, whether they are parallel. And if our rigs are attached to the left camera, the center or the right camera, and then we can change our eye separation for those two cameras. And again, this is if you're doing like 3D type stuff. So we are not, so we're gonna delete this. And we're going to jump back into our render. So up top, you have your layout. And this is what type of image you're bringing in. So if you're bringing in a lat long, which we do have lat long data in our EXR, we would select that. You could also select V cross and H cross. And if you do select one of these, you're going to have uh, the ability to change your positive Z and negative Z, as well as your clipping. And same with V strip and H strip. If we select this, if this is the type of footage we're bringing in, we can change our clips on those. So we're going to go back to lat long. And on your clip, this is just where you change that near and far clip. We can select adaptive near and far clip. So it just adapts as our camera is moving. And again, this is our focal plane for if we're using depth of field. Now I know we're not really seeing anything in here correctly. And that's because we don't have our viewing set up correctly. So if I right click and go to 360 view, and either hit auto or hit lat long since we're in lat long. Now we're viewing that correctly within our spherical camera point of view. So now I can come into our rotation and I can rotate it around and see our 360 degree view of our uh, little sphere and our image in there. Same with our X. I can move our X up and down if I need to. but now we're viewing this correctly. Now just know this camera isn't going to respond real well to additional things set up in here. So for instance, if I bring in another shape, let's go ahead and make this a cube. And let's uh, transform it back there. So we can bring it back. And let's go ahead and rotate it. All right. So now it's rotated. You notice our lighting is off too. So we've got an ambient light and we can change our intensity if we want, but that's not casting shadows correctly. So what we could do is we could actually add a directional light. And we'll input that into our merge. Let's go to our little scene here and let's find our uh, find our son where's our son where's our son there it is right there so we can take our directional light and let's go ahead and bring it up and we're just going to uh place this like kind of on our sun so we can get our direction a little bit so I can change it in the Y and remember your directional light does not matter where it's at within your world it's just going to uh, give that uh, light in the direction you tell it so we're gonna guesstimate our Sun there if I go back into our render view and I disconnect our ambient light and let's put our ambient light back up let's just knock it down we go now we got light in the direction of our uh, little sun there 
Now, just know if you're building things in here and you want camera movement in it, it's not going to work as you expect because if we start uh, painting around here, you're going to see it's going to do odd things to our shapes because it is a spherical camera. So it's not going to render our shapes out quite correctly. So that is the spherical camera node. And remember, this is not how we bring in uh, HDRIs for environment lighting. We will go over that when we go over our uh, textures. So I will see you in the next node breakdown.